All right, thanks for the heads up, Tashara. So all eyes are going to be on Washington this morning, where the Supreme Court will take up arguments against the Affordable Care Act, which many know as Obamacare. This has the potential to impact health care for millions of Americans, I'm sure, including some of you who are watching right now. Hannah Davis live this morning outside of JPS Hospital in Fort Worth to break down what could happen and what's at stake. Yeah, good morning, Karen. Texas is actually really playing a big role in this. It's a uh, one leading a coalition of states that are wanting to overturn the Affordable Care Act, and it's now going to the courts, the highest court in the United States. That's the Supreme Court. Now, the goal for the plaintiffs to have the Affordable Care Act deemed unconstitutional and throw out, something Republicans have been working on for the last eight years, really. The problem and the argument states that want to keep the ACA are making is that Republicans and those who want to get rid of the ACA have not proposed a replacement that. Would would cover some 20 million Americans accessing health care through this legislation. Uh, they don't know what's going to happen to young adults between 18 and 26 who are on their parents' insurance because of the ACA or what will happen to people with pre-existing conditions that are protected right now because of the ACA. It's one of the legislation's biggest achievements. Now, President-elect Joe Biden is set to give a speech regarding the ACA's future today as the Supreme Court justices hear the case. This has been brought to the Supreme Court before, though, eight years ago when it was first enacted. But but now it returns to the same court, which does have a much different makeup now, six to three leaning conservative. One of the biggest questions also is, will the court be able to look at certain parts of the ACA and maybe take out one smaller part as opposed to throwing the whole thing out? Different legal experts have said yes, others have said no. We'll only have to wait and see what time will tell. Chris, I know a lot of this also depends on what's going on in Washington. You've got the latest on that. Yes, Anna, the president is still contesting the results of the election, leading to questions about what this transition period might look like between now and Inauguration Day. Already, it looks like it could be a bumpy one because President Trump is saying that voter fraud is what cost him the election. And one of his allies, Attorney General William Barr, has asked federal prosecutors to investigate any substantial allegations of voting irregularities in their district before the results are certified next month. Barr was a critic of mail-in voting before the election happened, but the memo to investigate prompted the resignation of Richard Pilger, the Justice Department's top prosecutor for election crimes. In another shakeup, Trump fired his Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper. The announcement came via a tweet from the president and also named Counterterrorism Center Director Christopher Miller as replacement, Esper was opposed to using military force during the George Floyd protest, something that put him at odds with Trump. ABC News reports it left the Pentagon surprised, and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the firing is a sign that Trump plans on spending his final days as president, causing chaos during this transition. We could hear from about this from President-elect Joe Biden when he speaks about the Affordable Care Act later today. Kara, back to you.